Now let's look at a numerical on a time series where we are uh, uh, required to do a parameter estimations of uh, a few variables alpha and beta. In order to model a particular uh, seasonal data set, an actuary is considering using a model of this form. Okay, 1 minus B cube means it's a three period lag that is being considered xt minus xt minus 3, the tp3 period lag is being considered and that is being multiplied by 1 minus uh, alpha plus beta times b plus, so 1 period lag and a 2 period lag. So, because there is an xt minus xt minus 3 that is uh, coming up, I can very well, I mean, I can very well 1 minus b cube times uh, xt, I can look at it as xt minus xt minus 3, means the 3 period time lag is being taken. So, the seasonal uh, parameter s, choice of the seasonal uh, series difference, we can very well uh, look at yt equal to xt minus xt minus s, I can see that if I take s equal to 3, I can write it as yt equal to xt minus xt minus 3. So, I can very well uh, good go for a choice of s as 3. And within this, for this particular choice of s equal to 3, I want to check out whether this particular series is stationary or not. So, my characteristic equation will become 1 minus of alpha b alpha plus b times some uh, uh, some z plus alpha beta times z square. So, this is becoming my characteristic equation. So, we know that uh, for this kind of a characteristic equation, the roots are alpha and beta. Right? Uh, this is the sum of the root. This is the product of the root. So, for this kind of an equation, the roots are uh, alpha and beta. Or the roots are uh, 1 by alpha and 1 by beta. Right? So, sum of the roots is alpha plus beta. The product of the roots is alpha beta. So, 1 minus of this plus z square, if I am looking at a simplification, I am getting the roots as 1 by alpha and 1 by beta. Now, I know that this particular uh, roots, the absolute values of them should be greater than 1 if my particular series has to be stationary, which means uh, the modulus the absolute values of alpha and beta, both of them should be less than 1. And in that case, this particular series is going to be stationary. So, I am very much uh, taking that as the logic. Then, after appropriate seasonal differencing, okay, we have done the seasonal differencing, the following Sample autocorrelation for the series yt are observed. There is a row 1 that is observed as 0.2. Row 2, which is a time period lag 2, the autocorrelation is observed as 0.7. Now, what is the, if I am taking out the seasonality part, the expression is xt minus alpha plus beta xt minus 1 plus alpha beta xt minus 2 is equal to et. Or in a way, I could write it as xt equal to alpha plus beta xt minus 1 plus alpha beta xt minus 2 plus et. Now, I take the covariance or probably I do not mind taking the correlation also, does not matter. So, I take the covariance between xt and xt, which will make it gamma 0 here. Gamma 0 equal to alpha plus beta gamma 1 plus alpha beta gamma 2 
and uh, covariance between xt and et is sigma squared. And similarly, if I take xt and xt minus 1, this comes out as gamma 1, right? Uh, so, alpha plus beta gamma 0 and alpha beta gamma 1. So, this part is 0. Similarly, for gamma 2, if I am going with, which is covariance between xt and xt minus 2. So, this comes out to alpha plus beta gamma 1 plus alpha beta gamma 0. Now, if I look at these two per se, right, uh, if required, I can even uh, simplify them by dividing by gamma 0 across to convert it into correlation instead of covariances. So, this uh, gamma 1 by gamma 0 will become rho 1 rho 1 equal to alpha plus beta plus alpha beta rho 1 and rho 2 across I am dividing by gamma 0 which is converting it into a correlation. So, alpha plus beta times rho 1 plus alpha beta. So, these are the two expressions that are coming out here. Now, I have the values of rho 1 and rho 2 all together, right? Rho 1 is 0.2, rho 2 is 0.7. So, 0.2 equal to alpha plus beta plus 0.2 alpha beta. And similarly, uh, rho 2 is 0.7 is equal to 0.2. 2 times alpha plus beta plus alpha beta. Now we are saying let take x equal to alpha plus beta and y equal to alpha beta. So probably it is like uh, 0 0.2 is equal to x plus 0 0.2 alpha beta is 0.2 y. Similarly, 0 0.7 is equal to 0.2 alpha plus beta is uh, alpha plus beta is x, 0.2x plus alpha beta which is y. So, this is what is the situation. Now, it is a simultaneous uh, equation, right? So, probably uh, the top one, if I am multiplying it by 5 across, it becomes 5x plus y. Then, subtract 0.3 equal to 4.8x x is equal to 1 by 16. So, here my x is coming out as 1 by 16 and based on that, uh, I can uh, find out, right, 1 equal to 5x plus y. So, x is already 1 by 16. So, 5x is 5 by 16 making y equal to 11 by 16. So, y is, so y is coming out, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, y is uh, coming out to 1 equal to 5x plus y. All right. X equal to 1 by 16. So, Y is coming out to 16 and y equal to 11 by 16. So, which is uh, making me alpha plus beta is 1 by 16 
alpha beta is 11 by 16 right uh, so, sorry y is 11 by 16 x equal to 1 by 16 so all right here i think uh, we there is a mistake that came out gamma z if you are looking at it x t equal to Alpha plus beta times xt minus 1 minus, here there is a minus across, right? So, all this number will actually become minus, yeah. So, this number will actually uh, go as minus, which means even here we have a minus, right? Across we are having a minus. So, probably if I am taking this as 1 equal to 5x minus y and 0.7 equal to 0.2x minus y, x is still 1 by 16. But when I am finding out y, it is 1 equal to 5 by 16 minus y. So, y is coming out as minus 11 by 16. Fair enough. Now, the multiplication of these two is uh, 11 by 16, minus 11 by 16, and the summation of these two is 1 by 16, right? So, it is finally coming out as alpha plus beta is 1 by 16, alpha beta is minus 11 by 16, sum of the roots, product of the roots. So, we know that I should be uh, able to uh, write the expression x squared minus x into the sum of the roots 1 by 16 plus uh, product of the roots which is minus 11 by 16 equal to 0. Now based on this I should be able to simplify for x using that uh, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac plus 4 into 11 by 16 by 2. So, 1 by 16 plus or minus square root of square root of 1 by 256 minus 11 by 4 or probably this will uh, turn out to plus plus 11 by 4 divided by 2. So, x is coming out as 1 by 16 plus or minus square root of, if I am uh, looking at uh, it, 65 by 256 by 2 or 1 by 16 plus or minus square root of 65 by 16 by 2 which is nothing but 1 plus or minus square root of 65 by 32. So, 1 plus or minus square root of 65. So, from here I should be uh, able to find the roots of this particular quadratic equation. 1 by 16 plus or minus square root of b squared, b is minus 1 by 16, so 1 by 16 squared plus 4ac, 11 by 4, okay, this is 11 by 4, not 1 by 4, so 1 by 256 plus 11 by 4, so, this uh, will make it slightly a much more bigger number, 1 by 256, plus if I am uh, multiplying on both sides by 64, so this will uh, become 11 into 64, and not 256, right? Okay, let me uh, simplify this here. Uh, so, you can uh, simplify for the value of x, right, when you are uh, simplifying it, 
I can take it from here 1 by 16 I can take it all right 0 0.0625 then I am looking at uh, 1 by 256 plus 11 by 4 okay 1 by 256 plus 11 by 4 is this much and I have to take the square root of this entire thing Okay, it's 1.65. So, what we are saying is 1 by 16 plus or minus 1.65 by 2. So, this plus this 1 by 16 plus 1.65 by 2 is 1 root and 1 by 16 minus 1.65 by 2 is the other root. So, we are having uh, two different uh, values of x, right, uh, which is uh, working out to 0 0.86 and 0 0.79. So, we can find out uh, that uh, one of them, is, so we can very well uh, find out our parameters alpha and beta. Alpha, one of them is 0 0.86, the other one is minus 0 0.79. So, that's the way we are trying to get our uh, parameters for this particular expression. Then forecast the next two observations x101 and x102 based on the parameters estimated in the part 2 and the observed values. So, if I already have uh, the last 100 observations, right, first of all, if I really want to know I have to predict x101 and x102 and we know we are looking at a process which is yt is based on xt minus xt minus 3. So, xt is always yt plus xt minus 3. So, x101 even if I want it is based on y101 plus x98. Similarly, if I want a predicted value of x102, I require a predicted value of y102 plus x99. And how do I get this uh, y101? Right, because here I can very well uh, apply alpha and betas. So, I can very well uh, get, now using this if I want y101, I will uh, directly depend on this. So, this is where I am getting point uh, uh, alpha, alpha plus beta, the summation of the roots, 1 by 16 or point zero six two five times the one period lag which is y100 plus alpha beta is uh, alpha beta is uh, my the, the product which is minus 11.65 uh, minus 11 by 16 so i can uh, very well uh, substitute my uh, 1 from 11 by 16 times y99 now again the same logic i can apply 0 0.0625 times how do i get y100 here y100 if I have to get it is x100 minus x97. Similarly, plus 11 by 16, whatever it is, I get it as x99 minus x96. Now, this is the way out I can go and derive. Now that I have the y101, this can help me in uh, arriving it at x101 as well as the x102. So, this is the kind of a simplification that we have to do to generally arrive at the forecasted values from a time series expression where we have done the required uh, parameter estimation, right?